walk in faith. faith. And we just praise you and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, one of the scriptures that we were sharing with was about um, Matthew 18, 1 and 4, when Jesus was talking to the uh, disciples and they was asking who's the greatest in the kingdom. And, and he had the little child before them. And Jesus said in Matthew 18, 3, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that fourth verse said, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as his little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And you know, God is so, so cool. He's just cool. He is good. Sunday afternoon, you know, we haven't really been doing a lot of fellowship. And we had a fellowship Sunday afternoon. And we was in the midst of the praise and the speaker had come up. And this little boy came up to me. I did not know him. He did not know me. And he just came, he looked at what I, I, had, on, I had on the cross that day. We had communion. And he looked at the cross and then he did his finger like this. And I bowed down and he said, I want to dance, you know, and the praise was over. And guess what God said, dance with me. And we just danced right there in the aisle. And, you know, there was a time religion would say, you know, it's not time. Sit down, little boy. I said, God, I thank you for making me free, humble, just as a little child. We know how children do. Children don't care about what's going on around. And, and so I, I thank God for this freedom. And he keeps showing me how he has, he has made me free. He's made me free. And, and I'm just so enjoying this freedom because, oh, there's peace in it. There's so much joy and, and the love and, and how when we have the love of his love with us, it would draw people to us. And so that was, was something that God showed me. And, you know, again, he's been telling me about how I was fearful in religion, afraid of what people would say. There was a time I'd have been afraid about people would say, you're the pastor. You're supposed to be obedient to protocol and all that. God said, this little boy wants to dance. <laughs> so you dance with them, you know, but there's that fear, that pride, you know, and that's a big part of what I want to share today, how to let go of the shame. I, I have, I what became a Christian. I was baptized when I was 11 years old and I'm 68 now. And now the last year or so, maybe two years, I am hearing some some truths from God that I know I have heard preach. I have, I have preached myself, and, and, but I didn't have the relationship. I was in love with what I knew about Jesus, but not, I did not know him. And, you know, somebody can tell you that all day long, <laughs> but until you get it and you know Jesus for yourself, it just, you just keep on loving what you know about him. You say, amen, and you just, you know, thank you, God. And that was what happened. And God was showing me, he took me back through life and showed me many, 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 many um, examples when he had shared with me about how he loved me in spite of what I was doing. Even Sunday, I was sharing about, we were sharing the scripture in Romans 8, we're talking about love is the key to unbelief. And we was talking about all the things that that, that will not separate us from the love of God. And I was just sharing, God is talking to me. He said, we look at these things that won't separate us from the love of God. And, and God keeps telling me, okay, so you're coming from religion to relationship. What are those things that you were in? You know, we look at these as people doing it to us. Who's persecuted me? But he said, who have you persecuted? But I still loved you. <laughs> who have you brought tribulation to? But I still loved you. You know, and when God can trust you, to find out the truth about yourself. said, so you know the truth. Yes, the truth of God's word, but you know the truth about yourself and you'll become free. And you don't care what anybody says about it. And, and, and that was a lifestyle for me. What people are gonna say? Oh, I'm just free from all that. And I just thank God for that. And I'm just so blessed by it. And so about, about, oh, about five, six months ago, God put this scripture of Hebrews in my heart about uh, Hebrews 10, 22 and 25, about gathering together. Um, and we've used that 25th verse, not, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. And I know I have preached on that message before. I have had that message in my head and I've condemned people with that scripture about it. If you don't go to church, then, you know, you're really not in the body of Christ. And I have shared that with people. And God said, you know, you've done some things that, that, that really didn't please me. I still loved you. 
I still loved you. So now I don't want to do that. So as I look through those 20 seconds, 22 through 25, and it talks about let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. No more to worry about accusation. You know, the devil accusing us of stuff. We accusing each other of stuff. Our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession the profession of our faith. Let's continue to be consistent in this without wavering for he is faithful and that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to do good works. And that was something also God spoke to me. He said, <clears throat> continue to encourage one another to do the kingdom work. Will everybody do it? Will some reject? He said, yes, but that's another area that again, he said, I loved you, even though you were continuing to hold on to people that was rejecting me, Father God. He said, you, you give what I tell you to give them, let them go and keep your peace. And he, he talked to me about that because it's so, you know, being connected and know people and people want to do stuff. You really want to hang on to them. But he said, you got to let them go. I will draw them. You just keep showing love and, and keep your peace. And so that scripture has really blessed me. And so wherever I am, if I'm with two, three people, I see it as an assembling of, of, of us together to encourage one another uh, to do the good works and to keep loving and to be consistent in our walk with Christ. Um, I thank God for uh, my foundation. Uh, my dad founded our church. And again, you know, he loved the Lord. He was a great shepherd. And, and God just keeps reminding me, he said, you know, there were just times when you was a mess. You know, we didn't seem like we were a mess because we really intended, we really were intentional. We thought we were doing his will, but we were in religion. And, and I, I shared this many times once I went to a conference and I, my, my ears got tickled by what that person was saying there. I came back and God said, well, your dad said the same thing. <laughs> So why are you going to go and tell him what somebody said? I mean, that could offend him. I mean, he didn't say it did, but I came back boasting about what I heard in the word. I'm, I'm trying to get us free from religion. You know, I haven't been to drinking. I haven't been prostituting and all that. I'm getting us free from religion. Religion. And sometimes religion. You know, Jesus argued with the religious people all the time in the Bible. So the religion, we have killed people. We have walked, I have killed people. I'm going to keep it personal. I have killed people, you know, and I didn't do it intentionally. I do, I was doing stuff, but then when God shows me, but you need to follow me. And even as I know I had, my dad was loving us as sheep. He was helping us. Even, even the, the things that, you know, we thought were wrong and he wouldn't let us go and, and really be spiritual and free and <laughs> Jesus. But he wanted us to follow Jesus, even something as simple as, you know, I remember once he told me, uh, I was talking about some book that I bought back. He said, yeah, he said, be careful what you read. And I'm still in my head. Well, he doesn't want us to go any further. You know, I'm really kind of putting him down and condemning him. God showed me all this now. You know, I didn't know that then. And he said, and now I'm a pastor and I can really see what he's doing. Because now as I'm reading and as I'm sharing with people about this, I said, you be sure with what you read that the author of that book is pointing you to the author and the finisher of your faith, Jesus Christ. If you're not seeing where they're pointing to you, and sometimes we'll read a whole book and it ain't scripture in there, one, one word in there at all. It's what they say and it may be relating, but again, it's got to be our own relationship with him. And it makes all the difference in the world. And I can just confess that even now in this season as I'm, I'm receiving the teachings and the word that I'm hearing from God, I am, I am tremendously blessed and I am free in those things. Even in that Hebrews uh, scripture, it reminded me about as we're, as we're being uh, shifted from religion to relationship, it's, it's some trying that's going to go on. And he took me back to a, a part of time in my life when my husband, we moved to Detroit and I was waiting to get a job. I was on leave without pay. And I received, um, um, I went to volunteer with this organization that did uh, Special Olympics. And he reminded me, he said, remember when, when those kids, and that's the people we think are slow. And he said, remember, we think they're slow, but they're more focused than we are. <laughs> and he said, remember when there was a race 
and they were racing and one of the kids fell down. And what did the other ones do? And everybody was saying, go ahead, win the race. They stopped and went back and picked up the other one. You know, we don't leave anybody behind. We, the love, our race is love. Love. And, you know, God just brought all, the, all these things, you know, he said, hey, bring all these things. He said, I loved you even when you wasn't getting the message. I loved you then when you wasn't getting it. And I'm so grateful what he's bringing back to me. Because when we love him, you know, it's just like a parent. You're not going to let somebody you love keep doing wrong. <laughs> God loves us. And when we really want to love him and get it right, he can tell us what we've done. He can tell us how to get it right. Tell us to stop uh, doing the wrong thing. And there's no condemnation. There's no condemnation. So I was just so blessed by him reminding me of things that I had done. And then back to this book, you know, again, I had read scriptures. I've heard great preachers. We've got fellowships. Like I said, I've heard my friend teach and, and there was time I said, okay, that's kind of hard for me, you know? <laughs> so I didn't want to be around it because I had to make a choice at that time. Was I going to walk in the truth that I was hearing or was I going to continue in the way that I was enjoying and being comfortable with? And so many times I continued in what I was comfortable with. And I believed that I was right. And so I said, God, so this time God said, I said, God, I thank you for keeping me. I thank you for, for helping me. <clears throat> and I thank you for helping those people that I was telling things that really weren't true, <laughs> that I didn't believe. It. I believed they were true, but they weren't true. And so the more I hear and the more I get to know him, I am so blessed because I know that what I'm sharing is, is from him. And I don't want to share anything that's not from him. Um, Mark 11, 22, you know that passage about uh, the mountain, speaking to the mountain. You know, you, you speak to the mountain. We still do that. And we did that. We say, God, move this mountain. So God didn't tell us to move the mountain. To ask him, he said, move the mountain. And the difference is so, is so amazing. We hear what he says then we will do that and we'll see results. And, and even now as we're praying and as we're uh, helping one another, just like those, those Special Olympics, we're encouraging them to say, yeah, this is what we said, you know, and we're not condemning you and don't condemn the church either. You know, we're in this family of God together. We're children, we're learning, we're shedding. We're gonna, maybe layers gonna come off in different, in different speeds, but we're not going to condemn one another. We're not going to beat up each other. We're gonna say, well, let's look and see what that says for real. And let's talk to God about it. And let's see what he says. And let's pray, ask him to reveal this truth to us. He said he revealed it from faith to faith. He told us he'll do that. So as we ask and as we believe and say, how are we gonna believe? Because of what somebody else said, no, we're gonna believe it because we're gonna get in there and find what he's saying. Get our face in the book and find what he's saying. And as we believe it and don't doubt in our hearts, then we'll see those mountains move. And we'll see, and we'll help each other do that. We're gonna be encouraged. The more that we do it, the more we do it, the better we'll get. You know, it's, it's just good. You know, I'm, everybody know I'm a Chiefs fan. <laughs> The game, I'm not going to stay here long, Pastor Faye, but the game was pretty awesome Sunday. It looked like they were going to lose, but they came through. It was at the end, it was a fight. Well, this fight of faith, it's a fight. It's a fight. You know, we have to, but we, but we win. We already know we won, but we already, we got to get in here and he shows us how to win, but we've got to use what he said. We've got to hear his voice. And let him keep pushing. He's the coach. He's saying, go, do this way, do this way, do that way. Don't do what you think is right. You feel like you're being persecuted. I didn't tell you to go and talk about them and, and let's pray for them. No, he said, I told you to love them. <laughs> love them to persecute you. That's what his, his, his game plan is. And as we do that, then we will win every time. Every time we'll win. Even when it looks like we're not winning, we will win every time every time. And so, God, more. So we got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, but it has to be renewed to this word of God, not by what I'm hearing somebody say, but what I'm hearing God say. And then I keep telling them lately, I've been saying, I, this sermon that you hear me preach or somebody teach, it's not your relationship with God. It's your relationship with God. And then when you hear people, you'll confirm and you'll even know if they're not telling the truth so that you won't pick up the things that are not of God. 
And so, oh man, I tell you, I, I, I just, I'm just, I just thank God for him showing me how he was keeping me and protecting me and giving me lessons and even the little things that, that showed his love. I was sharing how he, he was, uh, when we moved away, I had to move away from home. I didn't want to move away from home because home, Kansas City was home. My husband's job, but we had to move and I had to go to this church and have the things I learned and the one lesson I learned, they went from door to door. You know, I didn't know how to win somebody to Christ. I had a good pastor there too. He was telling me all the stuff. I was believing what I knew about Jesus through him. <laughs> I still wasn't getting it. And so we're going door to door. So you go two to two, one's going to witness and one's going to handle the distractions. And so I was the one handling the distractions since I wasn't the one that knew how to witness. And one day I had to handle the distraction. It was a dog. <laughs> and I don't like the, I'm not a dog lover. God knew, God knew I was afraid of dogs. He knew my fear. But God's love for me helped me. He tamed the dog down. He helped me not just get frantic, but he also loved that person that needed to hear the love of God. And even the point that that pastor would always tell us just simple things. He said, when you're going to people's houses, you know, walk on their sidewalk. I don't care if their grass is just all dirt. Respect their house. Walk around. Just the lessons that show love. And I learned I was away from home and I learned those. I said, God, I, and God's bringing all this back to me now because I think he, he knows now that I really want to love him. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm really drawing to him and, and, and not wanting to uh, hurt anybody else with, with, with the, the ungodliness that I have lived. And so I, I thank God and God knows, you know, he knows he loves us as the church, but the truths are coming now. And even just as yesterday mornings, I was sharing, we was encouraging with another young man and he was talking about his father and, and some things that he felt that he hadn't done because he'd been a Christian a long time. I said, I sure would like to talk to him, you know, because the shame, the shame that one, the devil wants to bring shame on us. You know, these, there's some young people that are coming up that are on fire for God, but guess what? They need us. They need the truth. We've been walking through this thing. Nobody, nobody is, is, is canceled out. You know, the young people need the old people, the old people need the young people. We're in this family together. And, and Pastor Faye, you know, we started talking about the kings and queens of glory and, and how, you know, those, those saints and those mothers, they were still on it during COVID. They couldn't make it to the church. Boy, they was on it. They was at the prayer, on the prayer, on the conference, on the Facebook. They was on the prayer, on the, wherever they could. They was on the prayer. They were sending their offers and still doing it. And God said, you know, he said, you bear fruit in old age. And I said, God said, encourage them, encourage them, encourage them. And they encouraged me and they encouraged me. He said, now I said, you're one of those saints that are bearing fruit in old age. And I thank God for it. But I want to keep pushing the, the, the next generation. And sometimes it's hard because even when COVID came, I hadn't been on Facebook. I hadn't been on conference call, none of that. So there was fear. The devil wants to say, you don't know how to do any of that. Church is going to close. All that, all those lies. But God sent people. Send my way one. You was one of them, Pastor. But send people that knew how to do these things. He said, I'll give you everything that you need. Don't worry about it. You just keep loving me, trusting me, and, and loving people. And, and that's I, I trusted him. And because there was times when we didn't have, I just knew that we just had to do what my dad taught me all along. Now I'm saying, I see what you're saying, Dad. I hear what you're saying. Now I'm hearing what God is saying, but he was sharing with, with me what God was saying all along. But, you know, so, so parents don't, don't get discouraged. Grandparents don't get discouraged when your kids don't want to do it you say. We all did. <laughs> so, so don't get discouraged, but keep praying for them. Keep trusting God. He tells the seed of the righteous, you know, we're, they're not, they're going to, they're going to flourish. They're going to be, let's just keep believing what he says. They keep speaking. You know, my kids are great. My kids are awesome. My kids are, are, are leaders. You speak what God says about it, not what you see. Oh, they ain't going to be nothing. We got to speak to that mountain. That's a mountain. See that, that mountain of disobedience that we all we see, well, they're not going to obey me. So they ain't going to be worth a nickel. No, we speak what God said. They're our seed. And if we're righteous, they're going to flourish. They're going to be what God says. But that's speaking to a mountain. So speak to that mountain of, of, of disobedience in them. They may not know. 
I got grandparents, grandkids now. Yeah, you know, they don't understand. I, every, but I said, God, open a door and something will happen when all of a sudden we get to talk about something and I can put God in there. And they'll be listening. Now, I don't know if they got it or not, but at least it's been sold into them. And God is so faithful to do that. So I want to encourage you. And I really want you to know, uh, <clears throat> again, as I was sharing earlier about how we need to study, you know, him. We need to know him for ourselves. And this one scripture that God, you know, knew this scripture, heard this scripture over and over, and God brought it to my attention just the day before. Uh, 2 Timothy 2, 15 and 16. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And he said, go ahead and read 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more godliness, ungodliness. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> How much vain? How much babblings have I done, you know, that, that could have led someone to ungodliness? You know, if I shun, if I did not shun those words, guess what? I'm getting filled with more ungodliness. Am I blaming them? No, I'm not. I'm saying I did not shun it. I did not know it to be truth or not. But guess what? And so I got more ungodliness. So more ungodliness in me, more ungodliness out of me. And I repented and I said, God, I thank you. I'm free from that. No, and I'm not going to beat myself up or condemn myself up. We just want to get it right. We want to study. We want to get, we want to know him. And again, as Pastor said, like, it's not about just saying I read the word every day. I do, but I do it because I love him and I want to know him. Sometime at night, I'm just waking up. I just want to say, what did you say? I said, yeah, I don't remember. You know, you just be drawn to his love and it starts here. You got to, you got to, you got to start here. You got to start. You got to keep your face in the book, keep your face in the book. And as you're in the book, you listen to his voice. Listen to his voice. He, he will tell you, you know, none of this open the book and see where it opens up, you know, <laughs> oh, with the page. We've done a lot of stuff, whether it was intentional or not. There's so much truth that's going forth right now that it's no longer any reason, any excuses that we have to stay bound up in ungodliness. People need to see life and love of Jesus, and we have it. And so if we don't let go of our fear, our pride, our, our doubt, and all that stuff, then we'll continue to share the ungodliness that we've been filled with. So just we repent. And it's not a hard thing. You know, it's not hard. You know, I'm, I was logical all my life. Like I said, well, it's going to take a while to get there. God said, just repent. I got this thing. He said, I'll take you from kindergarten to 12th grade if you need to be there for that search, for that thing. But I love being in the kindergarten. I love learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. But if he needs you or I to be at a place that he can put you in the middle of some high folks in wherever, if he needs you to show, just like he used those unlearned disciples to do some things, to tell the story of God, Whatever it is, don't say I haven't been to college, I haven't done this. Whatever it is, if he needs you to be the light, to be him in that season, you will do what he says do. Because it's him in us. It's him in us. And we have to thank God and, and just walk in that. So, yeah, I know I know that you know, as I'm learning, just as a child, sometimes I may not get all the stuff right, but I know he's, he's not going to lead me, lead me astray. And I know he's going to lead somebody to help to help me get it right. I thank God for the teachers in the body of Christ. Thank God for the teachers in the body of Christ, you know, and all the gifts that he's given to us so we can become mature. So don't be guilty if you don't get it. You know, we don't get it sometimes. But then let's, let's not just stay there. Let's not stay there. So I praise God. I praise God. I think I'm going to stop there and I'm going to pray. Let me go ahead and pray. Or you want? Okay, praise God. My pastor, y'all, my pastor. <laughs> Lord, this, I'm lady, free. <laughs> this lady is a different lady than Lord. I've known in years mm. past. Mm. She tickles me, but she is just so transparent. That's that's Lord. the reason I love her and was Lord. drawn to her. Lord. Understand this was the covering. Mm. 
for me, Lord. spiritual covering mm. for me because of our transparency. Mm. When we did start talking and like she said, we've known each other for years mm. and years mm -hmm. and years yeah. of fellowship, but we were at a distance and mm -hmm. she didn't want anything to do with me because I'm just straightforward, <laughs> bam, you know, with, with the truth that I understood it. Yeah. But of lately, what's well, mm. been about a couple of years now, yeah. you have mm -hmm. been officially my pastor. Mm -hmm. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe three, maybe three yeah. years that she has been officially, officially mm -hmm. my pastor. So Lord. I am so proud of her and so pleased. Even when Lord. she talked about us being converted and becoming as little children, mm -hmm. sometimes we've graduated and we're, we get our diploma. So we made it through 12th grade and maybe we got a few degrees and we made it through this college or through this, this training or this skilling and we got our certificates. But when she was re referring to that verse, we kind of laughed yesterday because he said, except you be converted to become as little children. He's talking about, not talking about being childish, mm -hmm. but he's talking about little children who are teachable, mm -hmm. yeah. who, who can learn, who can be pottered in his hand. Yeah. And right away, she said, I'm willing to go from my highest grade back to <laughs> kindergarten that I might be a little child. And that just yeah. messed me so. Yes. So yes. listen. Like she said, we're not talking about beating nobody up. We're just talking about flowing in the family of God Glory. as his children. Yes. And again, sometimes he says, be converted and become his little children. And he, again, he's not talking about childish. Oh, look at how they looked at me. Oh, they took mine. Oh, I'm mad at them. He's not talking about that. Again, and as we grow up in his love and develop in his love and begin to see our true identity in him. Yes. That's the whole yeah. off us like water off our ducks back. Because that's not even our identity. That, that junk is not even our character. No. Mm -hmm. came in with the old Adam, but we yes. are now in a new man. His Lord. name is Christ the Lord. And his, yes. his voice is going forth throughout the earth, calling yes. us, saying, come home, come home. Yes. Even those of us that was in religion, he was crying out, come home, come yes. to me, come to yes. me, come to me. Lord. And so that voice is still crying out, come mm. home, come Lord. home. Come she said, home. don't get stuck in the shame and the mm. guilt, because there's no condemnation in Christ no. Jesus. No. Correction? Absolutely. He corrects yes. those that he loves. Yes. So yes. receive yes. his yes. correction as love. Hear this word mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and let's humble ourselves yes. and come into agreement yes. with this Heavenly Father who loves us like none other. Glory. For real, y'all. For real. Glory. Pastor Glory. just shared some good examples and Glory. some good testimonies Glory. of even the past of different things the Lord has been bringing to her. And, and there's just a wealth of Lord. revelation that he's showing her and then she shares it and we go whoa Lord. Lord. and it Lord. triggers something in us where now we are being awakened in Lord. areas Lord. in our own life through our own experiences mm. but i'm going to get out of the way i'm going to ask her go ahead and pray for us Lord. 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 pray for y'all pray for us, <laughs> us. As, we forward as the Lord. children yes. in the family of god thank yes. you yes 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 all right thank you i love you love you so much Love you, you so too. much. Thank God that you're my teacher. I oh my. Oh, Father God, Father God, we just love you so much. Ah, your love, your love is really the key to our unbelief. And we just pray now, Lord, we give and surrender all of our, our old ways, our traditions, our unbeliefs. Lord, we didn't even know they were unbeliefs, but we give them all to you. Lord, reveal them to us. Again, show us the truth about ourselves so we can be honest and, and, and humble ourselves and give it to you pray now, Father God, we in the body of Christ, we have received such an amazing and a wonderful gift through Jesus Christ. So let us no longer hold on to it. Let us no longer uh, use it as a, a, a gift that only we can have. Lord, it's, it's open to the world. Jesus, you died for the whole world. And as we understand that, and as we believe that, we will no longer think this gift only belongs to certain people. But we thank you, Father God, that the gift you've given to us, you will teach us how to open it up and to use it. Is any present that we get, we don't leave it, even the Christmas coming, we don't leave it under the tree, but we get it out and we open it up. And as we open up this gift of love that you've given to us, Lord, our eyes will truly be open. Our hearts will truly be uh, enlightened. We become awake to what you have for us. Lord, wherever it is that we are, whatever position we have, whether it's in the home, whether it's on the job, whether it's in the store, you have given us the gift of love and you will show us how to use that gift. 
Lord, I lift up those also in the body of Christ now that have lost loved ones. I want to pray specifically for them because, again, that enemy wants to use anything he can. And you've told us we can grieve, but not as those without hope. So we're praying for those families. A lot of loss in the body, but also there's a lot of life. You know, the enemy, the enemy wants us to believe that, that death is, is, is more in the land than life. There's a lot of life in the land. So let's, let's hear from our Father and let's continue to see the life that's flowing, even from out of us. <laughs> he said, rivers of water will flow from your belly. Believe that. As you get to know him, you know, you'll know those rivers. He'll tell you. He'll wake you up. He'll tell you to call and share with somebody. He will let you know who needs that life. So we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that we believe, that we believe you. Hallelujah. No longer walk in doubt and unbelief. And we'll forever give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord. Hallelujah. As you were praying, um, Pastor Sandy mm-hmm. Wainwright came to mind. Mm-hmm. And I almost said she lost her husband, but he's not lost. We know exactly mm-hmm. where he is. No. Uh, Pastor Calvin Wayne, Wainwright passed the other day. His services will be this Friday. Yes. Um, Friday at um, Friday at Lawrence eight. A. Jones, and then yes. Saturday at Memorial. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, if, if, if you've got access to Facebook, look out there on, on Facebook on Pastor Sandy Wainwright, yes. Cassandra San- Wainwright's page, and the information and times are there. So yes. even as you were praying, they came to mind. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thank Lord, you. Lord, Lord, Lord. All right. Listen, rise, shine, for our light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen <laughs> upon us. <laughs> Amen. Let's Amen. Move forward, family. Amen. Yes. As little children. Yes. In the yes, family yes. of God. Glory. And you know what? Even as I heard it, in the family of God. Family sometimes of in our natural families, we tolerate strife and confusion mm-hmm. and division. Mm-hmm. No, no, we're not talking about that family. No. <laughs> the family of God. And as we align ourselves, in the family of God, guess what? Yeah. It will align our families. That's right. In the family of God. That's right. Listen, mm-hmm. I, I can mess with it. I'm not going to. Pastors already preach. <laughs> and that's that's the answer for the families. Good. Yes. Be in yes. the family yes. of God and transform the families. That's right. That's right. All right. Listen, mm-hmm. see you next time. Thank you, Pastor. I love you much. Love you too. God bless. You. <laughs> planting the heavens in the earth. Oh, yes. Amen. I'm Faith Powell, your host. And again, our very special guest and my very special pastor, Pastor Mm -hmm. Irving Downs, has been planting and was sowing, planting the heavens Mm -hmm. in the earth so that we can reap heaven in earth as it is in heaven. See you next time. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.